So let's say you are you are really following God and you're really on fire, you're loving prayer, you're loving you know the sacraments and getting a lot out of it. What would I say is the one thing most necessary to really send you into overdrive? Like to be really, really fruitful, like I'm loving this. Whoa, what, to, what can I do to really, you know, up my game? So there is something I would say. And that thing is, drum roll, discernment. I know y'all were like discerning about that and you already knew that, I'm sure. Now, discernment means to uh, try and figure out what a good course of action is, what something, I need to do something. It's make a, de a decision really, but it's usually used in kind of Christian circles to mean a prayerful a mulling over and deciding what to do. To know not just what the good thing is, because loads of things are good, guys. Loads of things are good. What is the God thing? The one thing he wants you to do. Ah, great news for you. It's super simple. Okay, you're thinking, oh, I have to not eat for 40 days and then I have to climb a mountain. It was really, really simple. And I'm going to tell you what that is in a moment when I look at my notes. Couple of disclaimers or preparatory comments. First up, you might find it very, very helpful to check out my other video on uh, discernment of spirits, because in that I talk about Saint Ignatius and the principles he lays down to help us know when we're in what's called desolation and when we're in consolation. Uh, did it, did it, did it? Yeah, you got to be praying. Okay. Yes, yeah, so just living a serious uh, Christian life. Now, just a thing on that, you know, you have to be moving towards God. Saint Ignatius says moving from, from good to better. He describes the other one as moving from bad to worse. Okay. So if you're moving bad to worse, like every day you're kind of going slipping a bit further and you're kind of letting that happen you're choosing it so that's the bad one but the good one is you're going from good to better meaning you're trying every day to grow i want to grow my love of god okay i'm i'm still struggling you might be even struggling with with mortal sin but you're you're sincerely sorry you you are sincere you're, you're making firm purposes of amendment when you confess that means that you're like i i really don't want to do this again and i'm committing my my <laughs> all my weak pathetic resources to changing that Bingo, you are heading in the right direction, so don't stress it, even if you still fall into sin from time to time. All right, so you, you have to be praying, guys, otherwise you're wasting your time. Gotta be praying at least half an hour every day. And then you wanna check you're not in desolation. Check the other talk out for that, but if you're in desolation, don't be discerning. So here we are, super simple. What do you do to discern God's will? What do you do? What I do, I ask Jesus to make it super simple for me. I'll be like, Jesus, you know how terrible I am at discerning this stuff. Could you please make it simple? And just, if you want me to do something, just make it clear with, uh, with consolation, with like love, joy, peace, or some other form of consolation. Basically what it is, is learning what God's yes is. I'm not sure if I should do this thing. I'm not sure if this is my vocation. If you know what God's yes is, and you can just say to him, do you want me to do this thing? And then you, you wait and listen. And if you get a yes, bingo, right? It's pretty simple. If the yes is just consolation, is like love, joy, peace, patience, all that sort of stuff. The no is just, it's not desolation, but it would just be a kind of a flat. It's kind of just normal you. I don't feel God's presence. I don't feel any movement of the heart. There's, yeah, nothing going on. So just some really simple steps then of how to do this. So you wanna get, obviously get yourself a list. So whenever there's something that you really need to discern, guys, don't be putting like what toothpaste to buy on there. Don't be getting all into the tiny minutia. What cake should I eat? Where should I go on holidays? You know, just decide where to go on your holidays yourself. This is for stuff that you're feeling like, I really feel I should get involved in this ministry. I, I'm gonna, you know, commit my Tuesday nights to go to this prayer meeting, stuff like that. That's actually gonna impact your life, your schedule on a long-term basis. Like what my vocation is, that's a biggie. And maybe I can go into more detail in that one and a future, future talk. But this is the kind of stuff, the big to medium-sized stuff in your life. So I get a list. I have a list in my pocket. Then the next thing is I need to get some holy indifference. Now, indifference, we can sometimes think about like, oh, I don't care, whatever, whatever. That is not uh, what St. Ignatius would say about holy indifference. It means a lack of unhelpful attachment. Okay, so I want to be attached to Jesus. I want to be attached to his kingdom, to his will, uh, to the things that draw me towards him. But mostly I just want to be attached to him. If someone asked me to go to such and such a place and preach a retreat, if I really, really want to do this thing for its sake, rather than for God's sake, because God wants it, then I'm attached to that. I, I don't have holy indifference. I have an unholy attachment. And maybe I'm wanting, you know, I can't wait because there's people there and they're going to think I'm awesome and da, da, da. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe I'm like, oh my gosh, I can never do that. <gasps> so this terrible aversion. Okay, that's, that's also not holy indifference because I totally don't want to do that thing. Indifference would mean like, 
no. If, if you want me to do it, Jesus, I want to do it. But if you don't want me to do it, then I don't want to do it. So the only thing I'm attached to is, is his will. Okay, so we want to get to that place, and that's before the discernment starts. So sometimes people get to this place of holy indifference, like, oh, yes, I'm really peaceful now. I could do it. I cannot do it. And they think that's the discernment. They think that's a yes. It's not a yes. That's just you being ready to discern. Sometimes it's tricky to get to holy indifference, so I will do some preparatory stuff. I'll be in a time of prayer. I do this every day. I Now, you don't have to do this, but this is me. I pray uh, for a discernment on one issue one request every day and just take a maybe five or ten minutes to do this um, and I have a list so then I will thank God I kind of make acts of thanksgiving for this gift of discernment I'll make acts of faith to believe like I believe Lord that you do want me to know your will that you do want me to know it easily and clearly that this is possible that you want to reveal that to me now stuff like that I'll just build up my faith and I'll praise God through that uh, like I said, I'll thank him for other times that he's made his will clear. And I'll kind of think of those. I might look on my list and go, oh yeah, that one, and that was so blessed. And I'll thank him for it. And that again, builds my faith and opens me up to hear him more clearly. I also do that because the enemy, old red legs, he does not want you doing this. If you get this, guys, you will be so dangerous. You'll stop being a mile wide and an inch deep. You start being an inch wide and a mile deep, meaning you will be focused like a laser, God's laser of the kingdom to do just what he wants. We're wasting our energy. We're wasting the church's resources and energy doing like stuff that's good, but it's not what God wants. So it's totally missing the mark, even if it's not evil. We shouldn't be doing it. So this stuff is, is absolutely crucial. So the enemy, he's going to resist you. He's going to, it's going to be hard. You're going to be, re, you're going to get discouraged sometimes. He's going to really try and hit you with discouragement. So that's why I really plug in this, you know, thanksgiving and faith right at the start. Super, super important. Then what I'm doing is I'm checking for that attachment, you know, the fear or the aversion, all that sort of thing. So what I'll often say is, Lord, if you want me to do this, I want to do it. And I'll check my heart. How am I feeling? Am I afraid? Am I overly attached? Would I be okay if I didn't? I'm, I'm just making note of how, how I'm feeling. Then I'll do the opposite. If you don't want me to do it, I don't want to do it, God. And again, I'll check my reaction. How free am I? to just go after God's will. And I'll go back and forth a little bit. And if I feel I'm not free, then I'll, I'll ask God, God, will you please give me this holy indifference? If I'm afraid of what the, what it might, how it might go, I'm afraid of doing the thing. Again, I'll surrender that to God and maybe make some acts of faith and surrender, that sort of thing. So I just spend, spend some time there to really get my heart free. A little Psalm that's very helpful to me, Psalm 119, 147. I hope in your word. For me, that means I can't wait till you speak clearly to me about this request. I hope in your word. I really, I can't wait for it. And I know it's coming. Then I, after I've done that, I feel in a place of peace and calm. I feel, yeah, I'm, I'm, I could do this or not do this. I'm, I'm, I'm chill. I'm indifferent. Then I ask him, I say, Jesus, if you want me to do this, please make that really clear to me now, really simply and clearly by giving me love, joy and peace or whatever consolation you desire. So I ask and then I listen. What am I listening for? I'm not listening for words. I'm listening for movements of the heart. I'm observing my heart and just seeing as I think about doing this thing, do I experience some form of consolation? And guys, this is where it, this may take some time for you to get to know how he speaks to you through movements of the heart, through consolation. Is it a peace? Sometimes I've experienced a peace that is, it almost feels like it's feeding your soul, feeding my soul. It's so thick and rich and beautiful. Or a joy that is, is, again, it's just beautiful. It's like this joy mixed with peace and, and it just rises up in, in the heart. Or love, I just feel this ex experience of like love of, of our Lord or of, of souls coming up, stuff like that. So it's, it's clear, it's not what normally happens as I'm wa walking about my day and doing my jobs. And it's, it's unusual. So you will know what consolation looks like in your life. And this is, this, so this is why this stuff might take a bit of time for you to get used to that sort of thing. So just sit there, be patient, make some notes in your journal, listen, ask him again. If you find yourself, I'm not, oh, I'm, I feel some fear coming up about this. I feel doubt that God could really make this clear. I feel doubt that I could really hear him. I go back to the, the preparatory stuff of really making those acts of faith. No, I really believe that you want to make it clear uh, what your will is for me. If it comes to the end of my, you know, five or 10 minutes that I've given towards this and I'm, I'm still not clear or I'm still not quite indifferent, then I sometimes will just hit pause and come back to it the next day.
which is fine. But once I get the word, that means I'm asking him, Jesus, do you want me to do this thing? And I feel like great peace. I feel joy. I feel feels almost like his joy about the thought of me doing this. His love, his peace, his, his um, anointing, his enthusiasm just sort of comes to my heart. And, I, and it also is, is very much the way I have been used to experiencing his consolation. Then I know it's a yes, very simply. And I take out my pen and I do a little tick beside the request on my, on my list and I cross it out and I, my discernment is over at that point. Now, this is a very, very simple way to do this, guys. So there might be some others who will have a much more complicated way. This is, works amazingly for me. And it's very simple. Now, I, as I said, I don't go back to discern that again. If in a, at a future date, I'm like, oh, and I get another request on the same day. I'm like, oh, maybe, oh, because I really, no. I've made this discernment and it was a yes for this event. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm just like Jesus, like everything else is this is what the Father is asking me to do. So just in faith, I'm just going to trust that he has got, that's his will, he's going to provide, he's going to do everything. And I've had the most extraordinary experiences of him like providing the talk so powerfully for whatever event I had to go to. Like It, it would just come to me almost there as I sit discerning I, and I discern it, I get this beautiful, strong yes in my heart, this enthusiasm, this joy, this peace. And the talk just comes. It flows right out of the grace of that consolation. And then the event, numerous times this has happened. It's been so, so blessed because this wasn't my decision. This wasn't just me randomly trying to guess God's will. This was him clearly saying to me and me clearly responding and then me staying committed to that. So after I've listened and I got a clear yes, I act and I don't question it, I go for it. Very important, otherwise you give a chance for the enemy to get in there and sow confusion and it gets so messy. And also if I get a clear no, like I, I pray about it, I listen and it's like, no, every time I've discerned this, there's just been no movement of the heart at all. Then I know it's a no. It doesn't matter who asked me to do it. I just, yeah, I won't be able to do that one. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to go to Africa with you this, this summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that might be difficult. It can be difficult for me to say no to people. Uh, but it's really, really important. If There's no point in us discerning if we're not able to say no. We're just wasting our time. So really ask God for the grace to do that and to do it freely and joyfully and as an act of worship of him. The other thing that I will do is I will return to the grace of the discernment. So if I'm still preparing for an event, for a talk, for whatever, I will remember that request, remember the grace of it. And I'll just, yeah, let my heart enter back into that place of discernment. And this is amazing. I will experience the same consolation. It'll come up right away. Peace. A sense of God's presence is very frequently for me. I have the sense of God's presence, almost like a warmth around me and this beautiful piece. It really helps me prepare for whatever that, that event is. And it's also if I get confused or discouraged, you know, and say, oh, maybe I got this wrong, I will say, no, I discerned right, and I'll go back to that grace. I'll remember what it was like uh, to get that grace, and I will experience it again. That's, again, something St. Ignatius says, you return to the grace that you experienced in prayer frequently. Guys, this is a game changer. It has been a game changer for me. It has massively reduced my stress and hugely increased my joy in the Lord. My ability to be aware of how constantly he is present in my life and speaking to me through these movements of the heart, how much he really he really wants me to live a beautiful, peaceful, joyful, fulfilling life. And he wants that for you too. But we have to surrender all of our life to him. And this is a, one of the most beautiful ways I've ever found to do that. And uh, not just running around doing my own thing uh, or doing what I think maybe he wants me to do. It's doing what I know he wants me to do. And I'm experiencing the grace of it. Lots of people I'm seeing him around me are experiencing that too. So I hope this has been helpful. God bless you.